All right, let's take a look at my next family in Chile, Nebraska. Hi, we're the Moy family. I'm Michelle. I'm Harding. And we have three children. <coughs> Haley, who's 11. <coughs> Cameron, who's eight. Oh. And Matthew, who's four. Yeah. <laughs> I am a computer consultant. I travel. That's home. And uh, Michelle is a single parent during those times. He's usually gone Monday through Thursday night. I'm not real happy with his work situation right now. I feel that the issues that we're facing with the children started when Harding had to start traveling so much and being gone. Don't pick her and don't let the door slam in her face. When Haley's in a good mood, then things are peaceful. But as Haley's attitude goes, so goes the rest of the family. Ah! Hey! Because you're the worst person in the world. You're so dumb you don't know how. Haley, just stop it. Cameron is a big fat I don't like the way you're speaking right now. Oh, well. When Haley is being rude and disrespectful, it's really hard for me because I don't know how to handle that. <laughs> Discipline is not really working in our house because I think I'm, I'm confused about when to apply it and what is an appropriate punishment for them. That's where I struggle. You can't do anything about it because you're useless to us. This is ridiculous. I can't believe you're taking this. It's really her way or it's no way. Go to bed. No. Go. There's a lot of sibling rivalry going on between Haley and Cameron. They're only two and a half years apart, and they compete for our attention. I would just kill yourself then. You kill yourself. Well, there you have it, sisterly love or not. Hey, Cameron. Did I ask you not to get on that thing anymore? Nope. I am concerned about Cameron starting to do some of the same behaviors as Haley. Give it to me now. <laughs> Matthew is starting to exhibit defiant behavior as well. Like Matthew will throw tantrums when he doesn't get what he wants. Um, he doesn't like being told no. <laughs> We need to find something before it gets any worse, and I don't know what to do to stop it. Do not throw things in the car. No, stop. I feel like I should be doing a better job. I feel like I should know how to be a better mother. Um, she can't do anything about it. Things aren't quite right. I need to get to the bottom of this. I'm on my way. I'm Michelle. Come on in. Thank you. Great. Oh, you're oh, here. <laughs> you're home today. I am nice home. to meet you. Hello, Joe. Nice to meet Hi. you. Off we went to meet the children, and little did I know they were hiding in the closet. They didn't want to meet Super Nanny. I think they were a little bit worried about what they might get. How old is your young brother here? He's four. Yeah, okay. As soon as I arrived, I wanted to see exactly how bad this sibling rivalry was. And it wasn't great. You girls hang out together? No. We don't like each other. I don't like Cameron. You don't like each other? Mm -mm. Why? She bothers me all the time. And she lies about me. What did she say? Like, Haley's a stupid or whatever. I wish Cameron was out of the house. Because I wouldn't have to cope with her bothering me and starting fights. I don't really love Cameron that much. So why don't you like your sister? She pulls on my hair. So you're mean to each other? Haley is mean and not very nice to me. She's just very plain mean. I don't like living with Haley. She messes up my stuff and I pull on her head because she won't get out of my room. I barely go in your room. Try to get in my room. Do not. Yeah, you do. Do not. Do two. Do not. Do two. Do not. She does too. She's lying. They bicker very, very hard towards one another. They're disrespectful and they say things to hurt each other. How do you know what's clean and what's not? Like, there's some stuff that needs to go in the trash. You just throw it on the floor then? Yeah, because I can't find the trash can. What, what's that, what was that then? This is the trash can. I can't reach the trash can. I don't really like doing things by myself. 
like cleaning my room. I think that it's too much of a job. I'd rather have people do things for me than do things myself, because I don't like having to take care of myself. I like to get what I want whenever I want. I want to be queen of the world. Not only do these girls have no respect for each other, but they've got no respect for their things either. Later on in the afternoon, we went to Haley's fencing practice, and on the way home, she refused to listen to her mum and turn off her MP3 player. Are you listening to your MP3 player? Haley, do you have your headphones on? Haley, you need to take them out because I told you not to put them in. Did you hear me, Haley? You need to take the earphones out. Haley started to slap her hand to tell her to get off and leave her alone. That the mere fact that these kids think it's okay to hit their mother is, is beyond me. When we get home, I am taking them away. Don't scratch me. Ouch, do not scratch me. When Haley scratched at me, I felt frustrated in the car. I didn't feel like I could effectively discipline her. So why do you choose not to do anything about your daughter hitting you? Well, not for the hitting, obviously. You know. Then what do you do then? Because she's just done it. I guess I didn't do anything. Mum doesn't put her foot down and discipline the kids when she needs to. And so there's no roping these kids in when they become out of hand. I mean, when I punish Haley, I try to take away her things. I have unplugged her TV. I have also tried it to tie it to their allowance. A dollar a day for good behavior. I thought this was silly. If you pay the girls to be good, then they're only going to be good for a price. She thought, well, maybe if we tie the behavior to their spending money, then it would be more of an incentive for them to treat each other kindly. Because they're always wanting me to buy them things. So now they only perform if they're paid? Yeah. I realised at dinner time it's not just the girls that argue, but there's a lot of underlying intention between Hayley and her dad as well. You sit at the end like usual. I can sit here if I want to. I'm ready. I'm not. You can wait. I started traveling for work about a year and a half ago. I don't have the deeper relationship with the children that I should have with each one of them had I stayed at home. Cameron can never be cool because she's just not. Hey, hey, what did you just call her? I never said I never called her anything. Leave your sister out of that. You leave me out of it. We're not even talking to you. Hey. Hey, what? Finish your sentence, please. Oh, yeah. Don't do that to his stuff. Oh, yeah. I wondered that if Dad being gone so much affected Haley's behavior, so I decided to talk to him more about it in detail. And you speak to the children every evening? Uh, no, just just uh, Mondays when I uh, when I arrive. I call them like around 10 o'clock at night. You know, a lot of parents have jobs that demand travel. But for this father and husband to go away and to only call his family once seems crazy to me. It really does. After speaking to Dad, I then went and spoke to Mum because I noticed earlier that she had been crying in the car. And the question was, why? What makes you cry when you get into an argument with the kids? When they are being defiant and rude and I've lost my patience. I hate being in the conflict, so I just want to get past it. Why is she so angry with you? Why is she so angry with Dad? When she doesn't get time with me or Harding, she gets jealous of the time we spent with Cameron or with Matthew because they're competing for a limited attention. Their relationship is very volatile. Cameron and Haley's. Cameron and Haley's. Mm -hmm. You're unhappy, the kids' behavior, not having that quality time when dad is home. How, how has that not been a priority? I mean, what, what happened? How did it get lost? I don't know. I, I hadn't thought of that. Going into the parent meeting with Joe, I felt a lot of trepidation. She saw us being ineffective with discipline, and so I knew that she would have a lot to say.
let's talk about these issues you've chose not to address that's led us into the place that we're in now. Michelle, emotionally, you're recognising that it's taken its toll with not having Harding around. You're feeling like a single parent. When I watch you with the kids, you're very passive, no backbone, and you allow the kids to do what they want, when they want. You don't follow through with anything you say. When I watch your girls, I see their attitude, I see their disrespect. Your kids are rude to you, they smart mouth, they've got attitude, they punch, they kick. We were in a car yesterday where you were turning your head as Hayley was slapping you, and that was okay. Not once did you pull that car over to actually turn around and address your child for the way they were behaving. So you need to start thinking about the kind of mother that you want to be. I want to be different. I want to make the change. And I want my children to see me make that change. Let's talk about your relationship with Hayley. OK. It's strained. Yes, it is. It's hostile. You've got to reach out to her because she's slipping. She's yeah. slipping. Pull her back in. Let me talk about the next point here. I'm quite astounded that you can actually go away and not even pick up the phone to speak to Michelle during the week or speak to your kids. You can't squeeze five minutes to just pick up the phone and say, good night, sweeties. Where's the contact? There is none. So why would you expect your kids to even think that you give a damn when you can't even pick up the phone to call them during the week? What, what were you thinking? I wasn't. You know, a lot of families have a parent that does have to travel you know, for business. I think we face some common struggles that all, that a lot of families face. Correct, but they resolve them. Let, let's talk about Haley and Cameron. I know every child, every sibling has their bickering, their ups and downs, but primarily these two sisters are not enjoying each other's company, which is sad to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you've, when you've got Haley turning around saying, you know, I wish Cameron would die. I don't want her around. And she's saying words to, to make an impact, to hurt. They both actually do want to connect with one another. You can see it. You can see it's just their hurt behaviour, which means you've got to get them involved in doing things together yeah. instead of keeping them apart. Because at the moment, there's been a lot of work focusing on keeping them apart so that they don't argue. Throw them in doing things together so they learn how to work things out together, so they teamwork together. I think we've fallen into the habit um, over time of just letting things happen instead of t sitting down and taking stock and saying, is this really working? That's why we're glad to have you here, is so that we can see with an objective eye what we don't notice every day. We want things to be different, and we, we're committed to making the changes. So it's about recognizing what we do as parents so that we make the most of what we got right now. Are we ready for that change? Absolutely, We're ready Joe. to make a change. <laughs> okay. Good. Fantastic. All right, let's go. Because that was due to leave town, I knew I only had one day to really connect Hayley and her dad together. So I had a little surprise waiting for them when they got home. Ha ha! Wow, look at that. This dragon is in the living room because it's a metaphor for really what is going on here with regards to your relationship together. What do you say about Hayley? I feel like she doesn't respect me. Yeah. yeah we're pulling apart. We don't spend enough time together. Yeah. And what did you say about that? That he is not listening to what I say and he's overreacting. We're going to write those things down. And what we're going to do is slay that dragon and defeat it today so that we can start to build our relationship together. When they were given the chance to write down the things that they were really annoyed about one another with, they were very forthcoming. I think I do love my dad, but sometimes I really just, I'm really mad at him, which is what gets in the way of that. So that when you read out what's in the balloon, <coughs> you pop it. This allows you to be able to express how you feel. I thought it'd be really cool 
to have Hayley teach her dad some of her fencing moves so they could pop the balloons together. On guard. No, listen. Oops. All right. Oh, overreacting. Angry. Swing the dragon was the first step to my dad and I talking more. Then that would really help with our relationship a lot. Too severe about punishment. Oh, that one hit home. It served really well for Hardin and Haley because they were able to do this and have fun doing it at the same time. Strict. My feelings on clearing the air with Haley felt, felt great. I felt like a, a burden has been lifted off my shoulder. Oh. <laughs> After both Dad and Haley had vented their negative feelings, it was really important to concentrate on the positive. Dad, as a young child, used to love to do sumier, which is Eastern brush painting with his own father. So I thought it would be a really pleasant experience for them both to do that together. Yeah, I wish my dad was here. He does Chinese characters. He could do all this. I could see that Dad really enjoyed doing this with Haley, as he used to do it when he was her age. Be careful, I don't know if this will stay in your hands. <laughs> don't get it on you. <laughs> it was nice to do that with my dad because it was one of the steps to my dad and I talking more. What does yours say, Haley? No. Peace and tranquility. And yours? Family and love. Doing the, the sumier with Haley, I thought was very refreshing. And I think seeing those four symbols uh, together, I'm like, wow. She's given me a, an opportunity, a chance to make it right with her. At the end of the day, Hardin had to leave to go off to work, but it's just made a dramatic difference to this family. And I'm sure he's reaped the benefits of that as well. OK, how are you feeling? I feel like uh, a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I've made progress trying to reach out to Haley. I feel like she's going to give me a chance to make things right. It's going to be a long process, but I'm willing to, to put the time and energy into it. It was sort of nice to give my dad a hug, but I still have some doubts that he'll go back on his word and not fulfill the promises that he made. Right, nice We're going to miss you. I will be putting my family first from now on. I'm a, a man of my word. I'm committed and I will come through. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Bye, kids. Bye. Behave. All right. Safe travels. All right, thank you. When I was left by myself, and like, oh no, how do I handle this now? Harding's not here and it's all me. It was very overwhelming. The next day when Dad went off to work, things were back to normal. And Mum and Haley were arguing before I even arrived. I didn't move your stupid little stupid mouse. Do not use this language, stupid. or you will not get to play this game. Stupid. Okay, you're done. You're not playing anymore. No. You need to go to your room right now. Yes. Go to your room. Next. Dad, ha no, you listen. Dad told you not to slam any doors. Don't want to Remove. Go away. Hi. Yeah. How's your morning been? It's been kind of rocky. Yeah, what's happened? When we were playing the board game earlier, yeah. Haley was a part of it, and then she started talking rudely and talking back. And at that stage, Mum became very overwhelmed. And at that point, I just really wanted to just say, what's going on here? Uh, just let it out. Let it out and cry, let it out. What's going on here? Everything turns into a battle. Mm -hmm. But you're expecting something that's not going to happen. You're expecting no confrontation. You're going to get confrontation. You're going to get it. You've made a conscious decision to say, I need to stop all of this now. It doesn't mean that the kids are just going to step in and now make the effort. You know, one of the reasons why mum feels so badly overwhelmed is because she doesn't add a discipline properly. And that certainly was the next step to teach her. If these rules get broken, there's discipline. Matthew, you break these rules 
and you're going to end up doing time out on the naughty step. You girls will have reflection in the downstairs area where all your games and your TV is. However, the TV will remain off. The ball games will stay on the shelves. You girls are old enough and you fully know what's expected of you when it comes to behaviour. Okay, if you choose to be defiant with that discipline, then you will end up losing the things that you have now that you take for granted. Are we clear on that? So now we have discipline in place. However, Hayley isn't appreciative. So I took the whole family to a homeless shelter so she could see that there are people that are less fortunate than her and more grateful. Hello. Sure, how are you? Very well, and yourself? Good, good. Nice to meet you. This is my family. Hello. Glad to meet Michelle. you. Real pleasure, Michelle. We're glad to be here. I feel my children have been a little bit spoiled where they don't think about others. So I was excited to go down there and show a different place to them. Well, guys, can you use some help? Sure. You ready? We got, we got, got a couple good workers here for you. I was surprised to see that it was Cameron that kicked off and not Haley, but I knew Mum was going to put that discipline in place that I taught her. You are lucky yeah. to have a home and hot food every yeah. day. This is food provided for people who need it. This is your last warning. When Cameron continued to be disrespectful, right there and then, Mum gave her a timeout on a chair. You sit on this chair. I will be back in eight minutes, and I expect an apology, and I expect a change in your behavior. Cameron did her time out, but she still continued to be disrespectful. You were placed here because you were being rude and disrespectful and disrespecting their food. I want you to apologize. I said fine. Say, I'm sorry for being rude and disrespectful. Thank you. Now let's go back to the kitchen, and let's make some salad. Look at me, Cameron, I'm talking to you. No, don't pull me that face, you look at me. Now, your behavior right now is very spoilt and I do not like it. Stop pulling those faces at me, right now. Jo came and stepped in. She gave Cameron the kind of talk that I wish I would have known how to give her. Now, you need to think about your behavior. You really do need to think about your behavior. We are here to help many, many people who are in a less fortunate position than yourself. Now, you listen to me. I want you to get into that kitchen and be a part of everybody else that selflessly here works to help everybody else. And then, let's go. Let's do that. All oh, those words to Cameron sunk in. They really did. And then she just decided to lighten up and she joined in with the rest of us. Right here? Mm-hmm. That's good. You go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Wiggle it around a little bit. That's the way. See, you already know what to do. Another one? Look at that cake. Yeah, you like serving the cake. It was a really rewarding experience to be working on the food line at the mission, to see the faces of the little children that were there who were the same ages as Haley and Cameron, I think was very eye-opening for them. Can I just say thank you very much for giving us the honor to be able to serve you lunch today. And I'd just like to say God bless you all and have a really fantastic day today. Thank you very much. It's given us a wonderful opportunity here with the Moy family. It felt really good serving food to people and made me feel grateful for the family I do have. Cameron and Haley are making progress. I mean, it's not perfect. However, before I leave, what I do want them to do is to complete a task I've given them together. You have two days two days to create a garden on that deck. Plant pots, herbs, plants, okay? I wanna see a deck decorated like an old English garden. We don't even know what an English garden looks like. And they looked at me like I was mad. You know, well, we don't know where we're gonna get the stuff. I mean, how will we get the pots? We don't know what colors we want. How are we gonna find the English garden? I'm like, you'll find it. I don't like being around Cameron. I don't like her personality. She be mean to me. Sorry? That's not even correct grammar. Together, you are creatively going to paint pots and create a garden on that deck. 
In. In, put your hand on top. Come on, let's go. Right, let's go. Are you ready for me to leave for a few days? No, no, no. We'd prefer no, no. that you stay, but I know we have to try it on our own. I'm leaving this family for several days, and I am really looking forward to coming back and seeing some wonderful progress. How are we going to do when I'm gone? Very great. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Thumbs up. Exactly. Now that Joe is leaving for a few days, I was nervous about seeing her go because it's so easy to fall back into old patterns and old habits. Bye. Bye bye, darlings. Bye bye. Mom, give us a hug. <laughs> do good, do good. Keep your spirits high. Okay. I'll see you in a few days. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. After leaving the Moy family for three days, I was quite excited to see exactly how they would have got on without me. You know, whether Dad has kept in contact with the family and particularly whether the girls have completed their English garden. Right, let's get straight to this. Okay. It says, hi, sweetie, how are you today? I miss you and the Chitlins. The Italian restaurant that we ate at last night was fabulous. Hi, Dad, my day today was fun. We went to the... Um, People's City Mission and volunteered to serve food there. It was fun. I got to help make a salad and serve food to the residents. Daddy! Yeah! 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 It's Dad. Are you on the speaker? How's everybody doing today? Good! <laughs> We're having four friends come over and have join them for a little dinner party. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, we better get, get on with our party prep and we'll let you get back to work. Yep. Bye. Okay. But, but we're really glad you called. That's absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, Dad is away and, you know, he's really remained consistent. And look at the results. When he would call home before, Matthew would run away screaming, saying, no, 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 I don't want to talk to Daddy. And now we can't wait to talk to him, you know? And he's made a huge effort to send each child their own individual email, not just write a generic family email. It's true. It's all good. Yes. We're loving this. It's all good. Do you remember with the garden? I am not doing it. No, no, no. And I said, what? Well, that's what we're going to do. Let's take a look and see. How's yours? So, how's your purple pop coming? Good. Another big chunk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's morning, glory, morning, glory, morning. <laughs> morning. Wonderful girls. This is so cool. Give us a hug. Hug, hug. <laughs> But it's wonderful to see them at the table now and how they're coming together to work as a team. I mean, they're communicating, they're talking to one another. They're absolutely fantastic. And they really look like they were enjoying themselves as well. Yeah. What we're going to take a look at here is yourself and Hayley, all right? So let's take a look at that. I just don't want them to sit by them because they don't want to. It's not my fault if they Hayley. don't want to. Attitude is you wrong. You can't make assumptions for my friends because you don't even know. Right there, that is disrespectful and no, rude. No, it's not. To I me. said they're this not. This is your a warning. Friends. Stop right now. I'm not gonna even help you. Haley, look at me right now. I am trying to speak with I don't you hear fairly it. and understand where you're coming from. All right, what was wrong with this conversation? This is just very typical of the way that Haley and I have fought in the past. Mm -hmm. And just to see it makes me realize that, you know, I definitely haven't been handling it right. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I was trying, you know, it still wasn't working. So it's still mentally this thing of you feeling like you're, you know, winning or losing, winning or losing, but it's not really a win or lose because nobody's winning and nobody's losing here. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Right. We both lost right here. She gets you like that. Mm -hmm. recognize the buttons that are being pushed and, and how we can mm -hmm. diffuse all of that situation. Right. You don't need to engage in right. this. When you do, you make the mountain out of a molehill because you feed into it. And we'll see that when we're going to take a look at the next clip here. I have given you a warning and you stormed off. At this point, you will be going downstairs to the reflection room to think about how you are speaking and the tone of voice you are using to me. Move. 
right now. Up and move. You have been placed here. I know. Because of, no! That is why you have been placed here. Your rudeness and your disrespect. I expect better from you. Now you will stay here for 11 minutes and I will come back and I expect an apology. No. I feel like this is what happens all the time and I don't know how to change it. And I don't, I thought I was doing better, but I'm not. Let's look at what you have done here in a very positive way. You have started to do something here with regards to discipline. It's not there yet, but you started. I walked into a house where you weren't doing it at all. I don't call a mother a failure who recognises the things that they're not doing. That's not failure. That's a mother who's courageous and brave in recognising, hello, I'm not perfect. There's not perfect mum out there. There's a mum who does the best that she can. And we'll work on how we can elevate that level to a point where you're communicating a lot better with your girls and understanding them more. And I really especially want to work with your relationship with Hayley because Hayley's pushing buttons that make you really mad. And whilst you're feeling that way and you're holding on to that anger, it's not going to get better, your relationship with Hayley, okay? Yes. Give yourself a break. Cut yourself some slack here. Recognise what we need to work on, but recognise we're moving forward. We're not going back. We are moving forward. Great. We are moving forward. We better start, right? When I watched the DVD, I noticed that Mum and Hayley were still in a pickle with regards to their relationship. So I took them to a place that was very quiet, where Mum would realise that there would be key words that she would need to remember in order to stay emotionally connected to her daughter. What we are going to be doing this afternoon, climbing up this, OK? When we reach certain points, you're going to find that there are envelopes for you to open will have a very strong message in them with regards to how you guys build on your relationship together. Mom, why are you sad? Because looking at it, it looks scary. And I know some of the things that I need to change about myself to be a better mother are going to be scary to face and scary to do. But I am willing to do them and I really want to improve our relationship. My mom doesn't show anything that she likes me at all, that she's that interested in, like, making an effort to communicate with me. you got to hold that, OK? Mum, got to collect that one from you. Wow. The first message I gave Michelle was to trust her own instincts, because in doing that, she would become a more confident parent. <laughs> trust yourself to deliver. Work on your trust with Haley. I think this is the first step for my mom reaching out and wanting to communicate with me because it looked like she really made an effort to try to. Mom's climbing this tower and I'm really recognizing all the things that she personally needs to do so that she can get closer to Haley emotionally. So this is a good stepping stone in order to get that relationship that she wants with her own daughter. And in the final envelope, I spelled out exactly what Hayley wants most from her mum. Here you go. Love me. I knew things needed to be different, and I didn't know how to do that on our own. And I was willing to go through this very humbling, hard experience uh, because I wanted to change things and I wanted to change it for them. Yeah, my mom is really trying to reach out to me and she's really trying and she loves me a lot. I think I'm gonna try to communicate with her, to try to connect with her and be closer to her. It was cool, it was cool. <laughs> 
That was cool. Before I left, there was one thing I did need to check on, though, and that was to see exactly how well Hayley and Cameron had worked putting their English garden together. Now, open your eyes. Ah. It looks fabulous. And when I went outside, I just saw all these beautiful plant pots that they had decorated and designed. Yeah, look how beautiful it looks. I love it. This is your centerpiece. And your hanging baskets. It actually looks really nice, the colours that you've chose up against this grey. It was amazing to see how excited Haley and Cameron were to show Joe the garden they had created. It looks very, very pretty. Where's the camera? Come here! Oh, look at you! Girls! Me and Haley got along really good while we were making the English garden. I feel like I'm compromising with Cameron more and learning to work with her better. One, two, three. Seeing Haley and Cameron work on their relationship and mend it more is going to be the thing that matters the most to me. My garden is looking more beautiful every day. And shinier. Yes, especially when you guys smile. <laughs> <laughs> The Moy family, even though Dad is still away on business, have become more emotionally connected. And that's because two parents were willing to commit in making that change. And that's what counts. So listen, all of you. Take care. Keep up with the emails. Have fun with the webcam. Remember, keep making some smart choices. And Mum, own it. I have already begun to see, in our family as a whole, a feeling of closeness. I am communicating better with my husband. Haley and Cameron are more willing to work together. Give me a hug. Give me a big hug. Oh. Thank you so much, Joe. You really helped our family cooperate more and not be so angry and out of control. She didn't have to go. Give Take care of yourself, all right? Keep emailing. Cammy, give us a hug, darling. I thought Joe's been, your dad's been calling a lot. My mom is yelling less. Bye, Joe, and thanks for helping with our family. I want to see pictures of that garden when it's blooming. Bye, Matthew. You take care. And mum, give me a big hug. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay, you... I thank Joe for giving my wife and I the tools, the techniques to address our parenting issues. I am looking forward to coming home. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The thing I would like to say to Jo is that I can't thank her enough for working with our family. <laughs>